Hello Hunters, and welcome back to Super Fan Natural. Hunters, if I asked you to picture a particular demon, say Meg, what would pop into your mind? Probably the actor you most associate with the role, like Nikki Acox or Rachel Miner, which is understandable because these are the actresses that brought the demon to life and gave it a personality. However, it's important to remember that these human faces aren't the actual demon itself, but rather the meat suits it wore in order to interact with the world. No, if you wanted to really picture the actual demon Meg, you'd have to envision a cloud of black smoke because that's what she actually looks like. This isn't unique to Meg. In fact, all demons look like this, just plumes of black smoke, every single demon looking pretty much identical out of body. Well, almost every demon. There was actually one exception in the form of the show's most prominent demon, Crowley. Like other demons, Crowley looked like amorphous black smoke when he wasn't wearing someone. However, unlike every other demon, his naked essence wasn't black, but rather blood red. Now, you may be wondering, why is that? Well, unfortunately, I can't really tell you since there was never an explanation given in the show. The real answer is because Crowley was a main character and the showrunners wanted him to be identifiable even when outside of a vessel. However, in-universe, this detail was never explained or even really acknowledged. However, whenever the writers leave a hole in the show's lore, you better believe the fans will try to fill it. In this video, I'll lay out some of the most prominent theories about this mystery and go over the evidence that supports or refutes each. I'll also give a little theory that I personally cooked up and let you decide if it holds any weight. Before we get into the theories, we've got to go over the facts. What do we actually know about Crowley? Well, quite a bit actually. He was a major character for about six seasons, so I'll just focus on the important bits of info. In life, Crowley was a poor 17th century Scotsman named Fergus MacLeod. He was the son of a powerful witch named Rowena, though Fergus himself didn't seem to inherit any notable magical talent or power, so he lived a life of relative poverty. After a hard life of tailoring, Fergus made the fateful and somewhat baffling decision to sell his soul to a demon in exchange for a larger penis. I'm not making this up, that's canonically the reason why he transformed into a demon. I guess if nothing else you could say he knew where his priorities lie? Anyway, after 10 years of big dick energy, Fergus was killed and dragged into hell, where he was tortured and transformed into a red-eyed crossroads demon, and thus Crowley was born. Despite struggling in life, Crowley actually thrived as a demon. He was an incredibly skilled manipulator and salesman, and eventually his talent for securing souls nabbed him the rank of head crossroads demon, or king of the crossroads. Despite being part of hell's senior management, Crowley wasn't entirely on board with the demon's apocalyptic plans, as he was smart enough to realize that Lucifer wouldn't necessarily like demons. When the opportunity came, he actually helped Team Free Will avert the apocalypse, and while this did make him public enemy number one for a sec, he quickly managed to regain a position of infernal authority. Sometime after the non-apocalypse, Crowley approached the demon Ramiel to be the next king of hell. However, the yellow-eyed demon didn't actually want the job, so he offered it to Crowley. And just like that, the once poor, small-dicked Scotsman became the king of hell, and he would keep this job until his demonic death six years later, more or less. There were a few times where his grip on the throne was a bit tenuous, but for the most part he managed to keep the crown. Okay, so with the facts out of the way, let's just get right into the theories. Theory number one. Crowley has red smoke because he's a crossroads demon. At a glance, this theory makes sense. After all, crossroads demons are identified by their red eyes, and if their eyes are red, then maybe their smoke is too? Simple as that. Unfortunately, there's a few problems with this one. Firstly, we know that not all red-eyed demons have red smoke. We saw Crossroads demons smoke out back in Season 2, and unlike Crowley, hers was black. Even if you want to chalk that up to a retcon or something, we still have evidence that eye and smoke color don't necessarily correspond. We've seen the smoke forms of demons with yellow, white, and even pale blue eyes, and in each case, their essence was still the standard black. So yeah, I just don't think that this theory holds the answer to our smoky mystery. Theory number two. Crowley was red because he was the king of hell. This is by far the most common explanation I've seen put forward by fans, and it does make sense. Crowley was the only demon in the show to be officially referred to as a king of hell, and the title he carried wasn't just ceremonial. After being crowned, he had control over hell's soul supply, and he could change its appearance and layout, and at the end of his life he implied that he could personally lock up the pit forever. We don't know if these perks and the position itself come from a tangible magical power-up or a combination of clout and insider technical knowledge, but if it's the former, then it would make sense that such a supercharge would come with a physical transformation, hence the only red demon. It's a fine theory, but there's still a couple of holes that have to be filled in order to make it really make sense. 
Firstly, you've got to explain what makes Crowley's rule different from those of Lilith and Azazel. They both ruled Hell with as much, if not more, authority than him, which makes it really seem like they had the position of king, even if we didn't hear anyone refer to them as such. However, we saw both of them au naturel, and considering that both of their naked essences were black instead of red, this theory necessitates that there was something different about their time on the throne. You could argue that they held the position but not the actual power, but then you gotta explain how and why that would be the case. Also, if they didn't have the power, then where did it come from? How did Crowley get it? Was Ramiel hoarding it the whole time? Also, what happened to it after he died? Did it die with him? All of these holes make it kind of hard for me personally to buy into this theory. However, for the sake of argument, I did come up with an explanation that could make it make a little bit of sense. What if instead of the smoke reddening power up being something that comes with the rank of king, it's instead something that Crowley himself put together in order to tighten his control over hell? Having been the king of the crossroads, it would make sense that he would have intimate knowledge of the hell's metaphysics, how the mystical energy of souls and hellfire flow through the dimension. Maybe once he knew that the princes of hell weren't going to come for him, he took the opportunity to channel some of that energy into himself in order to boost his strength a bit, and in the process, stained his smoke red. It's also worth pointing out that while Crowley didn't inherit his mom's talent for magic, he did learn a few tricks from her, so maybe he used some witchcraft to help him go super satan. All in all, I won't fault anyone for believing that Crowley's redness comes from the crown, I just personally don't like it as an explanation. Theory number three. Crowley's essence was red because he was never fully human. One of the things that separates Supernatural's demons from other lore is that they aren't ancient creatures. Instead, they're human souls that have been transformed through terrible torture in hell. As far as we know, every single demon ever was once human, but maybe Crowley was an exception, and his red smoke indicates that his soul had a little something else going on. We don't see anything like this happen in the show, however there are a few theoretical scenarios that could result in something not entirely human being sent downstairs for demonification. For example, maybe he could have been a fallen angel. Unlike demons, angels don't start out as human, however they do have the ability to join mankind by removing their grace. Once the god juice is gone, angels apparently gain a soul and effectively become human. Usually, this involves them inheriting the body of a human that they were possessing at the time, which we know didn't happen with Crowley since Rowena confirmed that she did give birth to him. However, that doesn't completely discredit this theory. It is possible for angels to somehow rig their fall from grace in such a way that causes them to be reborn as a human baby. We don't know exactly how it's done, but apparently it worked out for Anna Milton, who didn't even remember her life as an angel. It's worth noting that Anna still had a connection to Angel Radio, something we never saw or heard about from Crowley, which kind of makes it seem less likely that he would be involved with the God Squad, but who knows for sure. However, a secret life as an angel isn't the only way that Fergus could have been less than human. What if instead, he was secretly a monster? Now stick with me, I'm not suggesting that he was ever a vampire or a werewolf or anything you'd have to be turned into. No, I think it's possible that he inherited some inhuman genes from his mysterious dad. We know that there are several species of monster that can mate with humans and produce children that are monsters, but who present as normal people. For example, Rougarou spend the first 30 or so years of their lives seeming completely human, to the point that they themselves may not even know what they are. What if Crowley's dad was one of these deep cover creatures, and he passed on some monstrous qualities to young Fergus? In this case, it's possible that Crowley himself wouldn't have known his true lineage. He never knew anything about his dad, and it's possible that his demon deal ended his life before any inhuman qualities could surface. The biggest problem with this theory is the fact that monsters don't go to hell when they die. Every single monster gets sent to purgatory after death, regardless of how they lived their lives. So, if Crowley was a monster, he wouldn't have been sent downstairs to the demon factory in the first place. Except, Crowley didn't die under normal circumstances and he wasn't damned due to bad choices. He sold his soul to a demon, an act that automatically marks you for the pit. We don't know what would happen if a monster made a demon deal. In fact, we don't even know if that's possible, but maybe Crowley is what happens. Theory number four. Crowley had his red smoke because he was a ginger. It's an easy detail to miss, but we do actually get a glimpse of what Fergus looked like in life. While looking around one of his personal storage units, Crowley shows off a portrait of himself as a child. If we believe that this kid is in fact him, then it means that, like his mom, little Fergus sported some colorful crimson curls. And I don't know, 
Maybe the ginger genes affect a person's soul. In fact, that's definitely what happened. Mystery solved, case closed. Theory number five. Crowley's smoke was turned red after he was injected with human blood. In the final episode of season eight, Crowley was captured by the Winchesters, who proceeded to inject him with large amounts of human blood as part of a ritual to turn him back into a human. They didn't complete the spell, however he was still affected by the ordeal. After several doses, Crowley began to feel emotional vulnerability, as well as remorse for all the evil things he had done as a demon. These effects eventually wore off, however he would continue to shoot up for about a year in order to feel what I can only describe as a human high. Not only was Crowley one of the very few demons who was exposed to this cure, I'm pretty sure he was the only one who was ever brought right up to the brink of being cured without undergoing the final step. Because this ritual involved transforming demons with the use of human blood, some fans believe that this is what caused Crowley's curious coloration. Honestly, that would be a perfect explanation if we hadn't seen him outside a meat suit earlier in the series. The first time we see Crowley's essence was in the second episode of season 8, so months before his involuntary transfusion. As he leaves Mrs. Tran's body in order to return to the literary agent, we see the King of Hell as he truly is, and unfortunately, he's already red. So as much as I wish that this theory could be true, it unfortunately is not. So those are the most common theories I see floated around to explain our boy's crimson cumulus cloud complexion. However, there is one more that I want to touch on, and I saved it for last because it's the one that I personally keep as my headcanon explanation. I believe that Crowley has red smoke because he chose to become a demon. We don't know much about the demonification process, just that it involves a person being tortured mercilessly until most, if not all, of their humanity is lost. Essentially, their former identity is destroyed to the point that many demons don't even remember that they used to be human in the first place. It seems like this process is involuntary, and I feel like it's pretty safe to assume that most people who go through it don't know what's going to happen to them. But what if someone did? What if there was a damned soul who not only knew that they could end up as a demon, but they actually welcomed it as a chance to rid themselves of weak, pathetic humanity and be reborn as a powerful supernatural creature. I kind of think that such a person might actually have some degree of control over their transformation. Basically, they go in with an idea of who they want to become, and so as their old self is torn away, it's replaced by something closer to their desired personality. I think that Crowley was just that kind of a person. One of the things that's always weirded me out is just how stark the difference is between Fergus and Crowley. Based on what we hear from his mom and son, Fergus seems like he was an angry, belligerent drunk who never accomplished anything and who sold his soul for, as his son put it, For an extra three inches of Willie. According to the show, that guy was somehow tortured into the well-spoken, well-read, level-headed master manipulator that was Crowley. No, the only way that that would make sense is if the makings of Crowley were already within Fergus, and the fires of hell just released them. I think that instead of being pushed into the flames, Fergus dove in and willingly allowed his humanity to be burnt away so that he could be reforged into a being with all of his strengths but none of his weaknesses. One of the things that made Crowley so dangerous was his self-awareness. Don't get me wrong, he was definitely a narcissistic maniac, but repeatedly it was shown that he had a much better understanding of his limits and abilities than most demons. I do think that Fergus had the potential to be a smooth-talking, world-traveling, wheelin' and dealin' powerhouse, and I think he knew it. However, he was held back from his potential by intense feelings of sadness, fear, anger, and most of all, a deep longing to be loved. This craving for love ran so deep that it was the first thing that came back to him after being injected with blood. And honestly, it's not hard to see why. It doesn't seem like anyone loved Fergus MacLeod. His mom hated him, his son hated him, we don't know anything about Gavin's mom, but considering the fact that she's never really mentioned, I'm guessing she also hated him. In fact, I would go as far as to suggest that he made his ridiculous demon deal in a desperate attempt to win this mysterious woman's affection, but while his endowment won him at least one night with her, the D just wasn't fire enough for true love. What I'm saying is that when it came to torture time, Fergus detested his weak human emotions, so instead of fighting the pain, he embraced it and willingly allowed himself to be transformed. But how would that redden his smoke form? Well, there's a few possibilities. As I said earlier, it could be that embracing the process allowed Crowley an ability to customize his new form in a way that standard demons can't, and he added a little bit of pigment as a way to stand out and fully own his new identity. I really like that idea, however, I also think it's possible that 
like one of the previous theories, the red color indicates the presence of a few drops of humanity within Crowley. However, in this case, it would be humanity that he never lost in the first place. So, demonification is basically a form of brainwashing, right? I mean, it involves tearing down a person's identity and replacing it with a different one. Well, funny thing about brainwashing, it doesn't always work as well on people who want to be brainwashed. It sounds counterintuitive, but think about it. Effective brainwashing involves finding and uprooting any points of resistance or weakness, something that can be difficult when dealing with someone who wants to believe, since they may be lying to themselves about their own convictions. I think it's possible that, in a bit of irony, Crowley was so desperate to become a demon that he ended up weaseling his way off the rack before he was fully cooked, leaving a few fragments of Fergus floating within him. This would definitely be questioned by Hell's leadership at the time, but eventually, Crowley proved to be such an extremely effective operative that they eventually stopped caring. And yeah, I think that's why Crowley's demonic essence is red instead of black like other demons. But what do you guys think? Do you have a better explanation for this mystery? If so, let me know in the comments below. Also, you know, like and subscribe and do all that kind of stuff. You know, I don't need to tell you that. I'll have more for you next month, but for now, carry on.